Five, four, three, two, one. What's up, Tristan Shop Talk? What's going on? What's up, man? Chill. What's up, Mike? Mike Rodriguez. What was your middle? Mike, Mike Daniel Rodriguez, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, what's up, man? So, uh, bring you on here. You're helping me out, like I said. You're helping me out by, uh, you know, by, uh, I don't know. I've, I've uh, I met you at Paradigm, and uh, I've been there like a little bit over a year. But then I don't know. Since I've been there, you you've been uh, training there. And then of course I remember you would uh, sometimes be teaching Coach Leroy's uh, class, right? And then sometimes you always fill in for uh, Coach G. Yeah, when they ask me to, yeah. Yeah. I'm like a substitute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So everybody, bring it in a little closer. Oh, okay. closer. Right there. Is that a little better? Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, but uh, overall, yeah, so yeah, here we are, um, Tristan's Shop Talk, uh, episode number 16, and then this is uh, pretty much, man, I wanted to bring you on just to talk to you about, uh, I guess, yeah, because you've been at Paradigm Training Center, and then you've been, you like I said, when, you've been there ever since I've been there, and I've only been there about a little more than a year, a little more than that, and then, uh, like I said, and then I think I've, I've only sparred with you like once, mm. maybe once or twice, <laughs> And then, yeah, so then, and then I, I had my ass handed to me. Yeah, I'm but, trying to duck you. I see you spar. <laughs> but not nah, but that that uh, that one time and the other times, like I said, you're you're always in there. So yeah, it's pretty cool, man. You're always training. So uh, that, I think that's that's a good thing because you know you stay in your field. And then uh, and then obviously, like I said, I know we were going over this earlier, but um, you're born and raised in Houston, Texas, mm. and then uh, you're from A Leaf. Yeah. And then what, 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 what got you into boxing then? Like, like what made you want to like fight people pretty much? Fight? Well, the way I started off was just, I was fat. I was just trying to lose weight. Yeah. When I was 230. No shit. Now, when I started losing weight, I was just dropping um, 10 pounds every month. So, just went on from fitness to jujitsu. Right. To boxing, MMA, not to boxing. But then, uh, but you know, it wasn't like the normal bullying. You weren't bullied or nothing like that. I was bullied as a young age, yeah. But because you were fatter. I was just bullied because I was smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was small, I looked weak, but that didn't stop me. You want to fight? We can fight. We can scrap it out. Yeah, yeah. but you were still scrap it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no matter what. But that was just, just that was just your normal, uh, your normal nature. Yeah, just to yeah. fight. Yeah. Um. I was belly, I was getting pecked on, I mean, little old me, I don't know what else. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, also, like, um, obviously, you know, you used to stand up for yourself, and then, you know, like you said, well, what, what age were you weighing at 230? 2.30, I was, um, 2021. 20, 2021? 20, yeah. Damn, no shit. 20, damn, you were already 2.30 at 21 years old? Yeah. Got but, out of high school and just came with it. And well, you're like 5'10? 5'9. 5'9? 5'10. Yeah, yeah. So then. Yeah, but like, like uh, your height's like an ideal height for boxing, anyways, I think. At 230? Well, no, 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 not at 230. I would say your height, though, in general. Uh, ideal 150. Yeah. Right? Uh, if you got a bigger frame, like 160, you can make it. My friend, I can't. Well, I can't, I almost say I can't, but I just won't build, get a bigger frame. I like the way I am. Yeah. So. But I'm saying, and then, but, but also I was going to say too, though, was like, uh, uh, I, I guess at that age you already knew that, yeah, 230 was a little, like you weren't going to, yeah, you, you wanted to do something about it. Yeah. So then. I mean, I just like working out in general. It's just, I can't stay still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like moving around. So then you graduated high school, and then uh, did were you in any sports in high school? I played football for for the school. I started school. I played soccer. Other than that, nothing. Yeah, and then uh, from, and then of course, and then from that, like I said, you graduated high school, and then you walked into Sugarland MMA. Yeah, I walked into a small gym, um, Sugarland MMA. My friend uh, was hitting me up because we used to box back then, but it was nothing big deal. It was just like a little backyard fight. Yeah. Like just come to the gym and like we can get some barn and like I bet. From then the coaches um, 
so many just um, fitness. Like again, I just like the fitness. Also, the coach, like there was a coach you met there that he yeah. kind of turned you on to it. Yeah. And he was like, come on. And he kind of took you under his wing or what? Yeah, he took me under his wing. Uh, he taught me everything. He put me to jujitsu, uh, little by little. Um, he went to my tournaments and all that. No shit. Yeah. So, but what was the first thing you started training on? Uh, jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And then, no shit. So then you were rolling around quite a bit. So. I was, I first started doing no gi because with the gi, I didn't like it so much. It was yeah. too hot. Of course, me being fat, it's like, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so after that, um, after a year or so, I was doing no gi, I just went into um, gi. Just stuck with it. No shit. Yeah. And then after, so you trained about how much and how, how long in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Jiu Jitsu, I've been training for nine years on and off. No shit. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then, uh, was it there that you got introduced? You said you got introduced to uh, also uh, MMA. And then, uh, well, I'm sorry, well, that is, that is the same shit. But I'm saying that's when you got, but when did you step into kickboxing though? Kickboxing was a year and a half, uh, same gym, uh, shit I've made. Um, Jeff, Jeff was really cool with it. He was really a good coach. He, like, he'll hype you up and push you to the limit. Like you say, you're in the Navy, now they push you every time. Oh, yeah. yeah he, would yell, he, would, he would yell at me every time. Yeah. To get it right, keep my hands up, keep on fighting, don't stop. Yeah. Same thing with Dan, um, Daniel Kanto, he was helping me out as well. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch with these guys? With Daniel, I do. Uh, I hit him up, or he hits me up here and there so um, often. Um, again, he moved. His, oh, he moved out of, his, out of Houston, or? Nah, he has his own gym, but it's kind of a distance. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We still talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you actually, I mean, he's kind of the, like you said, him, and then another guy is the one that. The kickboxing coach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the, the kickboxing coach is the one that kind of introduced you to kickboxing. Yeah. 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 So, like, with the jiu-jitsu, did you already know, like, I guess, more jiu-jitsu? So, with jiu-jitsu, obviously, you know, I, I feel, I mean, like I said, I've never done done it, but I've watched it, but it's a lot of, I would say, like, wrestling, mm-hmm. slash, you know, rolling around. Key locks, um, just learn how to break somebody's bones or put them to sleep. Wow, well, yeah. Basically. Yeah, but, I mean, obviously, uh, with learning that at first, I mean, were you still tapping into, you know, hitting the bag, like, doing punching and... Uh, any type of, you know, boxing training yet, or were you just straight, once you got there, like, you were straight jiu-jitsu, and then, then you hadn't, yeah, you hadn't really hit a punch yet, or threw a punch just yet? Not the sense of being trained of throwing a punch or kick, yeah. but throwing a punch, like, I did it before, since I had to defend myself, since I was bullied, like, um, but after a while, like, between two years, that's when I just like, I'm gonna try it out. It's, it's a different workout. Yeah, yeah. So I just, might as well just try to punch people. Yeah. Go well, in the mids. And then get that, get that on your belt. Yeah. What, cause, yeah, what shit, what year was this? Mm, 2012, 2013. That's what I'm saying, man, cause this is still like kind of young into UFC too. Like, yeah. So you were already in the mix. You were already doing doing this before the, pre- you know, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like what, I don't know, maybe like McGregor, McGregor hit. But I, I mean, obviously UFC was a little bit, you know, already out there. But I'm saying like, uh, how can I put it? Like like UFC wasn't out there as it is as of now. Yeah. But I would think like 2012, it was still kind of like people were watching it, kind of watching it, maybe not watching it. Mm. But then you're already training, you know, MMA. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just basing it with the UFC because UFC is kind of the general where people go to for MMA and jiu-jitsu and stuff like that. Because before that, I don't think there was anything else besides Pride and maybe some other small, um, you know, maybe promotion companies, whatever. Yeah. But I know UFC's always been around, you know, showing at least fights like that. So I'm, my point was you were involved. Yeah, I was involved. So you were close to you always watching that shit too, or what? I try if, if I don't fall asleep. Yeah. But if I'm with people around, then yeah, I stay up. But if I'm by myself, like I put it on, then I tend to fall asleep. But what about like the boxers and shit? Like, was there any boxers and like UFC guys you would watch closely? You'd be like, damn, this fucking like. I, I boxing like that wise, style. I really like PJ Penn because he got a really good boxing when he, when he um, first started. Who's this guy? BJ Penn. 
Where, where was he from? Hawaii. Oh, that's true. Yeah, um, like Hawaii, I like his boxing style. Then he he put his jiu-jitsu as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like I like really love that. But then they had uh, the Diaz brothers doing their boxing style, their jiu-jitsu. So that's where I'm at now, just straight boxing jiu-jitsu. Yeah, I like uh, Nate Diaz. Yeah. Nate Diaz is because uh, he's like five. He's like five eleven. Mm. It's like you know, he's like he always fluctuates 170, 180. Yeah. I know he, he's a he's a taller he's a, he's a taller uh, fighter, but yeah. Anyway, it's just like his stuff too. Yeah, Diaz brothers, and then of course Nick Nick's pretty fucking mm. pretty hardcore too. Um, but yeah, so then you were uh, doing that, and then obviously uh, you got you know, of course, it kind of went through the mix at Sugarland, and then you made your way to Paradigm. Yeah. And then you've been there at Paradigms ever since, right? Yes. Since, again, you returned 24. And then, uh, then Paradigm is where you're at now. I've been there. Yeah. And then, what year was Paradigm then? You got to Paradigm then? 2016, 2015. 2016. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, man, you've been there for a minute, six years or so. Yeah. Oh, shit. And then, you, and then what happened there? You just walked in, and you're like, yo. Nah, um... One of my friends, let's say, let's go to Paradigm, told me let's go to Paradigm to train wrestling and uh, different things cause yeah. to evolve our game, right? And so we did, I walked in, the first person I met was Colin. Oh, no uh, shit. Yeah, like he helped me out and everything. He'd been in my corner at some, some, of, my, some of my MMA fights. Um, he would teach me as well. I'm just pretty hard at it, right? Yeah. It's once I once we in there, once I'm in there, I just want to bang it out. Like he'll be yelling at me. I'll do retarded stuff like pull guard. Him, all my other coach like, why are you pulling guard? Like, come on, you wouldn't extend up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just old habit. Yeah. So yeah, so Colin right away, y'all y'all gravitated to each other. Yeah. And then obviously y'all y'all been on each other's side of corner. Yeah. <laughs> Bad. So that's what I'm saying. So you've done some actual MMA fights. Yeah, I done some MMA fights. And he's been in your corner, Colin? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, because you do MMA. I remember, uh, I've seen you do the MMA training on the class over there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some serious shit in there. Yeah. Yeah, you are pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, there obviously it's full contact, obviously. It is. And then, you know, and then, I don't know. I mean, it just seems pretty intense sometimes when I see y'all watching from the outside. I'm like, damn. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, kickboxing is a little, I mean, kickboxing is kickboxing, but. MMA is like, I think it's a whole lot of things together. Yeah. That like wrestling, and once they pick you up, you have no idea they're going to slam you, put you down, take care of you. It's like, <laughs> that crazy ass. But obviously, I mean, being in that, being in that atmosphere, I mean, being in that type of, uh, I guess, back and forth in MMA, mm. I mean, you got to be, I mean, everything, does everything have to be kind of leveled or do you, I mean, obviously, like, you know, some guys might be good at jujitsu. Or maybe they don't have jiu-jitsu, maybe they have wrestling. Yeah. And maybe they have boxing, and then maybe they got, um, you know, and then maybe that's it. Or maybe they got taekwondo or karate or some other old school shit, and then maybe they got, now they got kickboxing and Muay Thai, I don't know. Mm. I'm just saying that I think MMA now is just so weird, because I don't think everybody's leveled on every... No, no, everybody has their own different level. Yeah. Right? And they um, tie that shit in, you know? Yeah. But it's so, interesting, you know? It is. So once everybody got their own level, is that's the beauty of it, of the mixed martial art, right? It's got to be on point. Yeah. Right? So if, you, if you're not, you either you get hit or you get taken down one way or another. Yeah. But see, that's what's so badass about, I mean, about uh, boxing and fighting because, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You're always, you can always be uh, somewhat surprised about what's going to actually happen, you know? And boxing, it depends who you talk to. Um, I say that because if you, if you don't know how to set up the punches up, you already know what they're they're gonna do. You already know what their favorite punch. But for example, Canelo, he knows how to set everything. He knows how to faint. He knows how to go in and out. He knows how to play dirty boxing from his distance. Yeah. Right. So he'll pick you apart from anywhere. But if you got somebody that doesn't know how to pick you apart, he just he got, he goes his um go to move. You can see it coming, and you can bait them. Right, that right. That makes sense, right? Yeah. So if you know I got that good hand coming down, on my right hand coming down the pipe, you can bait me and... Trick. Me, yeah, you can make me mess up real quick and put me to sleep. Yeah. Right, so it's... 
I mean, I don't know. It's not Dan. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. Canelo, though, man, that dude there, that dude there, just like, he just seems quick and like, like any punch he's going to land on you, that's going to be a blow to you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I ain't going to lie, man. Like, I, I can actually relate. Like, when I did spar with you, I don't know, you have like just a fucking hard, <laughs> you just have a hard hit. It's, it's not like, uh, how can I put it? Some guys like just hit, but you're, you're, <laughs> you're hit, there's like power to it. Mm. But it's like you're not trying to uh, force, force it. Force it. Yeah. And I can't even imagine if it went beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Because that just being just sparring. Because I, I, mean, I know that's not 100% on what you're giving. Yeah. But I'm saying like even if it went beyond that in an actual fight, that's what I'm saying. That's why I would relate it to someone like Canelo, like, like when I watch him. Like he like fucking actually... Like, I mean, he punches with a purpose. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I guess. You know? And then I, I'm, I'm guessing you have that 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 gauge to, if you're going to punch with a purpose, you can punch with a purpose. Yeah. I mean, even based on me just sparring with you, I was like, yo, that seemed like, damn. If you miss a punch, it's, you can either <laughs> get hit back. Again, if you know how to set them up, they will hit you back, right? Yeah. Um, if I miss a punch, I know that I'm going to get I'm gonna, going to get hit. Or I'm just wasting my energy. I don't want to waste my energy because yeah, you get tired afterwards. Right. Right. Yeah, so, you gas out. Yeah, you don't want to gas out at all. But it's been funny ever since I've been training. Now there is times when I'm in there and then uh, I don't know. It's like finding energy at the last moment. It's mm-hmm. like you might have like a break because maybe your opponent is having a little. He's having his break, and you kind of you can catch like a moment to actually like, get some clarity, or I guess get, get your thinking right again. Okay, all right, well, what am I gonna do? Okay, I see him doing this. What the fuck is he gonna do? And then you kind of back up, and then boom, you're back in it, and then yeah. and then you're a little more responsive than before, which seconds before you were kind of late responsive because I ain't, ain't gonna bullshit. Like you get kind of worried because you're like fuck, like damn, I did this, did that, I kind of failed and. Then you kind of lose track of mind. You're like, oh shit! And then that's like those milliseconds of getting like. Mm, but you also gotta think they they doing the same thing too. Right, right, right. But it's like a mind game. It's weird. It's like like you're you're like you're both like like because you're adding contact to it. So it's like you're adding uh, like uh, I mean you're based on what you're seeing. <laughs> But what he might do, mm. and you're trying to guess, but then you're also trying to block, and then you're also trying to play defense, and I mean, you're trying, I get, it, but you're, you're trying to be first before anything he does. Right. Like if he don't, then he's getting his energy. If he started punching on you, then you're losing energy. He's getting that confidence back. Yeah. Uh. But I mean, like, like going back to Canelo, though, like Canelo just seems like the confidence is always there. Mm. But see then. See, then this conversation can go into something else, too, though. Like, like okay, Canelo in his young days, uh, like, like you know, I, I feel like when he had no choice to who to fight, by far, yeah. But now Canelo, the Canelo now, I, I don't know. Because it's like, I feel Canelo now, he gets to choose who he fights. Mm, in a sense. He, somewhat, yeah, but now he just want to fight the bigger, like the top one people. But who else is there to fight, though? Are you going up a weight class again? Yeah, see, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. see, I mean, I mean, I guess that's cool, but you know what I'm, but you know what I mean, though, right? I mean, I, mean, I feel sometimes some boxers get to the point where they can pick who they want to fight to make themselves still be on top. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, because of the promoting, I mean, it's kind of like it's also influence. I mean, you can kind of say that maybe they verbally can come on and say, "Oh yeah, hey, I want to fight that guy. I want to do this and that." I mean. But then again, there's still behind it. There's still money involved, and also there's mm, other other politics. politics. Yeah, there's politics involved. But as in style from Canelo, which I'm going back to, would be like, yeah, he can definitely deliver deliver power. It shows shows it. But I mean, uh, I don't know. Maybe I lost myself. But but my point was, yeah. So so he can he can he can definitely you know the, he can punch with a purpose. But then again, like I said, I, I would just like to see him challenged a little more. As guy, you yeah. know, talk to his opponent. Yeah. Because I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean look at look at Mayweather. May, Mayweather's retired apparently. And then if I got here, you know, still talking shit. Mm. He's retired apparently, but then it's like, yo. Well, he talk, he's talking about knowledge now. He got a whole bunch of knowledge. True. 
true, true. No, no, and I'm not knocking Mayweather, but I'm just saying, like, like I just feel if Mayweather's still in the mix, then Canelo. I mean, I mean, it's almost like they were in the same. They were. I mean, they were neck and neck. They actually fought. No, mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. So my point was, is that like, like Mayweather could still be fighting, I guess, as well. I mean, uh, maybe just. But he's not gonna improve, though. True. Right. He's what? He's old. He's. A, and he's old, I don't know how old is he, honestly. But he got to improve against younger people. He knows he's the best. Everybody knows he's the best. Canelo is on his 30s, right? He's still... He's still but now, yeah, how, what's the age difference in uh, Mayweather? May, Mayweather's probably like 40-something, probably. I know Canelo was on his 20s, and he was probably on his 40s. Maybe so 20 years different. Yeah. I don't know. It's been a while, because I know he was young. But there's a big age gap in between yeah. Mayweather and Canelo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I'm, I'm, but see, my, my point is, it's like, Canelo got to tap one of the legends, which is Mayweather. Mm. Obviously, he lost to him. But, uh, but at the same time, like I said, I mean, it's like, I just don't see anybody else better than Canelo. You know? I mean, based, based on what I see, there might be a fighter out there somewhere, somewhere out there, but yeah. the overall, I guess, in... The ones that are very, I guess. Um, if you want to look at fighter, um, for Canelo, just look outside his um, promotion, promoters. Look outside his promoters, and you can probably find fighters that yeah. either could meet him or give him a hard time. Yeah. Right, but inside his um inside his uh organization, maybe not. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and it's just, there's one way to look at it. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, that, and that's where I feel. I mean, but I, I feel like his boxing's always had that 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 battle with everything, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not the problem with two fighters fighting; it's just like all the politics involved and just having the fight happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, from the bets to the where it's gonna be held at, ticket sales, pay per view, all that other shit. But city, you know, all mm-hmm. that stuff, and then that factors in, and, and then it's like, damn, yeah, man, just let him fight, you know. But like I said, every time I've watched Canelo, I've never, I've never been disappointed. Uh, I don't think nobody has, but yeah. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, I would say, but then again, this past year, shit, that Tyson, Tyson, and Tyson fight was fucking shit. That one with Tyson and no, 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 I'm not talking about the uh, the the Mike Tyson. I'm talking about the other Tyson, Tyson Fury, and, mm-hmm. and then uh, no, that way, am I saying right? I don't know, are you talking about heavyweight? Or? No, no, heavyweight, yeah, it was Tyson and... Uh, Tyson Fury again. And uh, so. Whitaker. I don't think I've seen that one. You didn't see that one? That was the one with the, you know, the gypsy against the uh, homeboy. No. Yeah, that was like one of the biggest fights. Oh, yeah, and then the other, remember the one I was telling you about also was uh, the the dude from Australia. Uh, Colossimo, or... Well, well, I guess I'm back... Bouncing. Well, right now, I'm talking about boxing, but the other one was, I believe it was Whitaker and Tyson. And then the other one was uh, uh, the one that Lopez got beat by that Greek, by that Australian dude that Austin. Yeah, beat. I saw the highlights of that one. Yeah, yeah that, those are the two best fights I've seen this whole year. And yeah. then maybe there might be another one I might be missing, you know, but other than that, those are the best fights I've seen this whole year. And then, I, I, well, I think I missed out on the Canelo fight this past year, too. I don't know who Canelo fought this past year. I forgot. I know, but I just don't know their names. I'm yeah. Bad names. Yeah, I don't have nobody to look it up. I could have it looked up, whatever. But yeah, but yeah, and then uh, so yeah, from there, um, so now, like I said, now now you're looking ready to go fight again or what? I'm trying to get ready. Uh, yeah. Um, trying to lose weight first and trying to walk my walk up my fight weight. Which what's your fight weight? 50, 150. No shit. Yeah. So I just got 18 more pounds to lose. Mm-hmm. Um, for boxing, if I want to go back to MMA, I'm either thinking about going 145 or 135. No shit. Yeah. But the good thing about MMA is like you can drop all that weight and gain it back the same day. You don't have to fight. Boxing, you weigh in and you fight the same day. So explain this to me, like on that end, like I'm, I'm, and I, I'm actually just getting it firsthand. But like, so a person the day of weighs in, weighs in. Say we'll use an example. One weighs in has to be one fifty five, and we'll say MMA. So they weigh in one fifty five. 
weigh in that day. Um, okay, so we'll say it's what, Friday. They weigh in on a Friday, what, 5 o'clock? Mm-hmm. 155. So the flight, the fight is what would be the following day, which would be a Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then the fight the next day on a Saturday. But you're saying from the point when they weigh in to the, to the actual fight, they can go in. They can go eat, go finish, eat. rehydrate. And then and during that whole time, they're just replenishing themselves to whatever, how... Now, do some fighters always be punished, or do some fighters just say, hey, I'm, I'm fucking just going to eat a little bit, or just fucking... Um, it depends. If they don't... No, all fighters be punished, because they're draining from all that um, water. They took all that water out of the system just to make weight. If you're fighting 155, that fighter is either walking either between 165 or 175. Yeah. Right? So... If they're dehydrated, yes, once you drink water, you're going to gain a lot of weight. Right. Right? Water weight. Water. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to go from 155, you're going to blow it up to 165 at most. But but in that case, what is it based on the fighter that is a disadvantage to how much they went away? Or is it more based on, like, you would say, like, it's up to the individual of the fighter? It's up to the individual. So for, my, for me... When I fought at 155, they said I was too small for 155. They want me to drop to 135, 145. Right. But I love to eat, so I just fought at 155. Yeah. Then later on, once I came to Paradigm, like, um, the MMA coach convinced me to go to drop down. So like, okay, I guess I got to drop down diet and whatnot. So I started doing that. I felt good. If you diet real good, then... Um, you be you be fine for the fight. You won't be you, you won't be dehydrated. You won't be you won't miss anything. Yeah. Right. But if you do it like I used to do it, starve myself and barely eat throughout the whole day and train for three four hours at night and go fight, then yeah, you are your body's gonna take a toll on toll on it. But maybe some same, but like some fighters do that shit. But I mean, I, that's the part I'm trying to understand. Why would they do that to themselves? You know, mm. it's just it's just the mind of yeah. like I said. It's in the they just trying to take advantage of every anything they can get. Yeah. Right. If you're tall, you can make one fifty five, and you got a big frame, then do it. But if you would walk on 180, 175, it's gonna be a big problem. Yeah. But they still do it because they they want that extra edge. Yeah. So it's like almost the edge is like having less in you. <laughs> uh, it's up to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, I, I, because I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, cause they have no even, even in wrestling. Wrestling, it gets a little carried away too. Mm. Cause there, I know that's always been like an issue. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Back in the day, I remember watching some. I don't know. It was like some story, news story about how a lot of wrestlers, you know, a lot of them get sick because. Yeah, they fucking cut weight and they're fucking doing some crazy shit mm. beforehand. Yeah. And it's fucking weird and crazy. They make it. It's just that mindset they got. It's just they want to compete, right? They just love, they're just a competitor by nature. Same thing. Um, some fighters, they just, they're just fighters. They want to make that way and they want to fight. Yeah. They, they'll do anything just to get that extra edge. I mean, me personally, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm never, I'm never an amateur fogger or anything like that, but I'm just saying, me personally, I just know that it sucks because I get hungry, I get fucking hungry, you know? I'm a lean guy, I've always been a lean person. Yeah. Uh, I can eat more if I want, if the food's there, prepped and everything, but uh, I just know if it came around to a point where I had to be cut, I had to, like, decrease weight for, like, say, meet a meeting, like, when they say that Friday, I had to cut weight from running... I could do it, but like I said, I just know my body would be lacking of just being. I mean, you got you got like, like just being feeling just normal, you know. Yeah, I mean, you got eight weeks to do it. it between either eight or twelve weeks to to cut off that weight. Um, yeah. The last day, you should only be cutting five pounds of water weight, and that's barely anything. But if you can, if you do it wrong, like I used to do it, then yeah, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna yeah. Take a big toll on your body. Yeah. Right, but. Everybody's different. Everybody got their own mindset. Everybody is very disciplined if they really are into it. If they want to become GoPro at it and become bigger at it, right? You just have to be. You just have to have the mindset to you know what, screw it and do it. Right, right, yeah. No, you're right. You're right about that. Yeah. Because sometimes I don't want to do it. Like, man, I just want to go eat. 
And that's what I'm saying, dude. I mean, like, I feel, like, I mean, it's only normal to be hungry. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I mean, and then also, like I said, I mean, the only, only thing I can relate as in being somewhat where you're just constantly on, like, a routine or whatever it would be, like, the military, like, and that would be, like, on a deployment. And deployment, you're kind of, like, you don't have the option of having to go to a fridge, mm. like, in the middle of the night, like, say, 11, and go to your fridge, maybe bake a peanut butter jelly, you know, or I don't know, just something that would just fill your in. Maybe it's, like, another snack or or whatever, you know, yeah. maybe a fruit or something. No, you don't have that shit, man. You have, you're all, like, you have three squares, your protein, and you work out, and that's it. <clears throat> so, like, my point is, is, like, it's easy to cut weight and, and maintain your, your I guess your uh, it's not that easy well no 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 but I'm saying like like no no but I'm saying like when you're on deployment you don't have oh, like fast food yeah. you don't have like quick exits like I yeah. said if you're laying around you go to your fridge you open up you know maybe make some shit <coughs> oh man uh oh and then so anyways my point was like it's just it's it's less it's less temptation, like, out on deployment. So then, like, I feel it's almost relative in a way. But me just hating that, I can only imagine when you're trying to, you know, train for a fight and, and you know, maintain to get to that point to cut yeah. weight. So then you already have all this shit in front of you, which is not like being on a deployment. Deployment, you're just cut from all that. There's no fast food. You're on deployment out to sea. You can't go to a drive through to go eat some shit real quick because you yeah. have some fix or whatever you want to go get. No, that's it. You're going home. You know. I mean, I mean, you're going to your rack, going to your bed, and you're passing out. So that's what I was saying. You're kind of cut. So I, I would get hungry around shit ten or eleven, man. Because I, you know, I mean, I'll be in my rack. Sometimes I wake up around ten or eleven, and I'll be like, "Damn, man, I'm fucking hungry," you know. But I mean, what the fuck am I gonna eat? I can't. I can't. I, I live. I'm living like a little shelf type of deal, you know. I can't. I can't go to my refrigerator and eat something real quick. So then, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, you're able to kind of maintain because you only eat three times a day anyway. Yeah. And then you have maybe supplements here and there. Mm. Wow. So my whole point was that cutting weight seems like it sucks. No, it does suck. <laughs> you can't enjoy, you can't enjoy what you want to eat. And then, especially when you have um, like little get togethers with your family or your friends and they have good food right there good snacks yeah you feel like a fucking weirdo you're yeah. like hey you, hey man go grab grab a drink or grab this and you're like oh I can't yeah. like, and then you feel like you know you're being disrespectful it's yeah. like no I'm just well, I, uh, well all my friends um, <coughs> like all my friends and family knows that I do this and whatnot. When and they know if I'm not eating or I got something coming up right or if I, be, if I am eating or something small I'm not eating too much Again, I got something coming up. Um, like, all my friends, all, they're all from the gym, right? All my teammates, friends, family, they know that I'm doing this, so. No, no, but that, 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 uh, but no, man, I mean, I, and then I'm, I'm going to jump on, piggyback on that. But no, but that's why I like my paradigm, man, like I said. And I relate it back to the Navy, man, because it's like, it's like somewhere I have to go to go. And I'm not gonna bullshit. Like, there's some times where I'm laying on my couch and I was like, dude, I could easily just <laughs> sit here and not go in or just don't go. And then, you know, but then there's no reason to. So I, I have to go, you know? Yeah. And it's embedded in my head to go. I go, do it. You know, right? I, I might lip off or I might, you know, you know, get sore walk, walking off. But my point is, it's like, I like the training there, you know. Kind yeah. of just keeps you keeps you on point, you know. Yeah, everybody's nice in there. All the coaches, all the people. Yeah. Um, well, also, but but also, I can say this too that that you you be told how to be told if you want to get what you want out of yes. that training, you know. So that that that's another thing. Like some people, and man, I, I relate this a lot to training too, man, because like, I got feel some people want to go to train and they want to see results for whatever reason. Either they they're um, they're they're down about how they look, or they want to uh, feel more energized, or they want to. My my point is, it comes with a it comes with a cost, mm -hmm. and the cost is you have to go somewhere, and if that has to be somewhere to go train, which I would use paradigm as an example, you have to go in there. 
yeah, there's gonna be some things you're gonna do and you might not like it, you might hate it. Yeah, people, a lot of people don't like it at first, but once you start feeling it, like kickboxing, once you start hitting something, then it's better. You, 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 you're, you're releasing some anger, some stress in you, right? Yeah, it's, it, you're exerting, exerting that, yeah. That, 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 yeah, yeah. And once you start learning how to punch, how to kick, how to defend yourself, you can start applying it to sparring. Then when you hit it somewhere in the face, it's, it's something nice about it, right? <laughs> or chopping their legs, it's something nice about it. And then, oh, yeah, dude. Uh, so, yeah. Like I, I said, I'm just ducking you because I don't want you to beat me up at all. <laughs> nah, nah, that's you, dog. You, you, you got the hard hits, man. Nah. <laughs> oh. Nah, but that, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, you know, and, and that, that's why I say I, I know you have your heart in it because, like I said, like, uh, it. I, I when I got in the military I started working at Twenty Four Fitness and when I started working there I was uh some sometimes the, the girls there or whatever, sometimes they'd be like, Oh, you're a trainer I'm like, nah. I'm just pretty much like a fucking towel boy. Like I get paid like fucking seven fifty a fucking hour to wait up in this fucking front counter, which is cool because that seven fifty an hour, like I, I worked like thirty hours a week and I was going to school. So I was going to school and working there. And then I was able to use the gym. And dude, it was badass. Yeah. So that, that's what I saw. Like I saw like, okay, I might get paid seven fucking fifteen an hour and I just got out of the military. Like, dude, like that's not like shh. No, no, I'm sorry, not seven fifty. Let me anyways, I was getting paid shit. I think it might have been nine something or maybe eight. I'm not even gonna hate on twenty four hour. But my point was I wasn't getting paid shit and I was using the gym. And then when I was using the gym, it it got it kept me still in the in the mix that yeah. work out even though I was going through a lot of stupid shit too at the time it still kept me like kind of going so um, I had always wanted to kind of go because they would offer this like they would have like these little uh, like posters around saying like you want to be a trainer I'm like uh, 24 hour fitness would pay for a certificate and this and that yeah and then, you know, I'm not going to lie, like, there were some family members who were kind of like, ah, I'm going to be a trainer or whatever, and I was just like... I mean, yeah, you can always have your haters talking shit, they always come with the family, right? Well, I mean, because they were kind of like, like, oh, you want to be a trainer? I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, but, but what I, but I mean, it's kind of probably what you see, you know, it's just that you see potential in everybody, you know? Yeah. Even the people that don't see potential in themselves, it's like... No, like kind of, they kind of just need a kick, or they, they kind of need a, a push. A little, yeah. yeah, like you're saying, they just need a little push, or hey, or a good job today, or hey, what you did, hey, I saw you try, whatever. But they need a little more, a little more. Yeah. Now then, into that, I know it goes into keeping people coming in, and you gotta, you know, then that's that's the other side of the business mm-hmm. too, you know, is to keep them coming in because going back to the military, military, you're forced to be there, you're forced to have to work out. Uh, either you don't work out or you do. Either, and then most most of the time, I feel like it goes back to that normal shit of that normal way of thinking is like it, it just it just exercise and just like the exertion just helps you um, helps you think better. Yeah, it just cleans out. It kind of cleans out your head, you know. And then when you're using your body, you're working out whether it's from you know running, extra, you know just normal exercise and then to weight training to boxing whatever. It just helps. So. Then going me going back again to paradigm like as I said it just keeps you keeps me in line you know and then like you know I, I had thought about training but then also that's why I'm trying to coach under Coach G too also because you know I, I feel now I'm at the point where I enjoy helping him uh, with other students that are coming in that are new and then holding mitts you know and, and then he always told me you know that's part of Passing, pass, you know, passing it on. You know, yeah. you can't always be just the one hitting. You know. Yeah. <coughs> Man. Wow. But yeah, yeah. So my my point was, like, just saying, like, uh, training is, is good, and 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 I feel uh, it's needed because a lot of people need, like you said, they need that little. They need an outlet. That's what they need. Right? Yeah. They need to release that negativity out of their life. Whether it's like working out, running, um, getting punched in the bag, hitting mitts, did you need something to take that out? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess you can say I did that too. I mean, hell, I was going to a little depression, depressed state. Um, 
got into the fitness, then got into jujitsu, got into everything, just and then started up. I just stopped forgetting about everything. But but see, man, also I feel it's like it's like you, the individual. Um, you kind of like everybody has to go through kind of a dark. It's like going like like you know, of course. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna use like kind of a descriptive, but it's almost like going down a road. You have lights, mm-hmm. and then you know it's, it's a lighted area. But then maybe you get tired of going down that street with the lighted area, and then there's an alleyway, which you know maybe that's like the dark side of, of going down or whatever. What, what I'm relating it to is just like sometimes you have to kind of go somewhere. I kind of got to go. I mean, because you get into this state of being depressed for whatever reason. You know, everybody's in. You know, everybody's. Everybody has things that they go through. So sometimes I feel you have to kind of go through those bad things and think about those bad thoughts to get to yeah. the other side. But hopefully you have something to, 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 to cling on to, which what I would say would be like the boxing or, or exercising or, yeah. or just doing some type of workout or or just uh, doing something about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and then that, I would say that's kind of our view because maybe other people would use... I don't know, whatever else they use, you know, maybe, you know, whatever other addiction they might be. You do guy, you can have somebody. Right, right. You listen to, just got to have that one person or one thing, right? And I was pretty lucky that I have the gym I where I'm at now, apparently I'm lucky that I got all the friends, all the teammates, all the coaches. Yeah, you got family. Yeah, yeah. right? So... If I'm down, I'm not going to rely on them. Like, hey, can we talk away? Well, I won't say that. Like, hey, let's go spar. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's go roll, right? <laughs> and that's a bad say that. They would just duke it out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, I mean, because, uh, cause, no, but that's what I was saying, man. Like, like I, I, like, I don't know, like, on the advanced kickboxing, when uh, Coach G has me, like, in those line, I mean, he has this lined up for yeah. working our feet work, and then, and then he's walking like up and down, and that right, that right there just throws you back to like when I was in the Navy, and then it's just like, I, I just always knew, man, stand there, listen, uh, do what you're told, mm-hmm. try not to fuck up, and then you know, of course you fuck up, you know, yeah. then he calls you out, but then like I said, that's part of the training, that's part of being coached, that, that's all part of what what I'm there for and why I'm there, and yeah. then whether it's for personal, whatever, you know, it's just, I'm I know there to be will yell at you. Yeah. And if it's only hand pad for you, he will pop in your ear, on your ear. Like, <laughs> get the hands up. Oh, yeah, dude. Like I said, he's adamant about the hands. Yeah. I, 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 like, and then, of course, when I'm in the ring with somebody that's more experienced, of course, that's, <laughs> that's the first thing that's in my head. I hear that shit echoing in my head, like, keep your hands up. Because once you're just like, oh, like. <laughs> you know, I felt it. G1 went past me, he'll pop me in my ear. I'm like, man, I gotta stop doing that. Man. <laughs> like, I gotta listen. Oh, I can't listen if you pop me in my ear. Yeah, man. So, right. So, um, that, and then, and then, but that, that right there is like, yeah, as I said, that right there just throws me into, uh, like, 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 I, I just relate back to the military because it just, like, it keeps. Military, I felt, uh, you know, somebody else said this the other day that there's a, there's always a purpose to everything you do in the military. Mm-hmm. Like everything, you know, down to even cleaning your clothes. There's a purpose and a reason. And then, uh, so that's why I said it just, it like, that paradigm just still gives me, like, a purpose, you know. Yeah. Like, like, like fuck, man, I gotta keep my hands up. I gotta do this, do that, listen. You know, just, you know, and then when I go in there, like I said, it's the same deal, you know. I feel like, yeah, it's a, it's a nice family there, you mm-hmm. know. It's cool. Hope you know. Hope they keep promoting what they're doing there. You know, yeah. it's pretty cool. And uh, and then uh, so then like so now so you're looking towards the end of the year, the mid year that you might be ended up training or training or fighting. No, I'm sorry, fighting. I'm sorry, yeah. that's what I meant. Um, Gordon Gloves around the corner. I said more, so I'm getting ready for that. Um, if anything else comes up. After that, I'll do it. Like, I know there's going to be a whole bunch of jiu-jitsu tournaments. I'm going to end up doing it. Um, I'm going to try to get back into MMA as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. like, I like being active. Once I start, I, I like keep, I like to keep on going. When they're losing, let's on to the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Um, in between, just can't keep on training and teaching. Right? Yeah, and then, oh yeah, 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 so that you're, uh, 
so when you when you train, like, well, what's your uh, your time that you train? Mike trains. Uh, in between the classes, in between the hours. So, for example, t- on Mondays, I teach on uh, in the mornings at six a.m. After that, I ask my my coach, my strength and, strength and conditioning coach, really, and, like, can we put in some work? He'll say, yeah, he'll stay with me. I put my my hour, two hours in, then. I got a gap in between till 12, uh, 2 o'clock, I do my cardio, then I start later on at night, either I do jiu-jitsu or wrestling, um, it depends on the day, same thing, Monday through, every morning, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m., I do the same thing, boxing, straight boxing, with either Stan or Leroy, or head coach Leroy, yeah. um, after that, just at 7 o'clock, Train with Stan and Blake. We are training strength and conditioning with Brilliant as well. The whole entire day, or the whole entire week. Um, the cardio part, I guess we do. Everybody does the one cardio on their own. I do my cardio on my own. Yeah. Um, then at night, I tend to either do jujitsu, wrestling, or boxing. And this is like four times a week. Yeah, for strength and conditioning, four times a week. Um, cardio, trying to do it every day. Um, boxing every day, jujitsu every day, um, wrestling twice a week. Um, what else? Kickboxing, a uh, Muay Thai. Uh, try to do it four times a week. Just keep on going. Yeah. And then, of course, I have to work around my clients. Work around. But yeah, and then you have you have and then you have a few clients. You have more than a few clients. Yeah. Um, just try to work around that. If I can't, I try to knock everything down. Everything in the morning, just like my down, my down side, right? Yeah. So I just put in my work in the morning. Yeah, uh, like I said, man, that's also like the whole whole point of this this platform here. It's yeah. Just like if I can get it more set up to where it can help your your advertising, your uh, your training. Yeah. You know, whatever, or just kind of like maybe. Like I said, grab these excerpts and then maybe, you know, go on and I don't know, somehow, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm learning as I go too when it comes to this editing shit yeah. and the equipment, like dude, it's a whole other world now for me that I'm learning, but the whole key would be to like grab excerpts and then you use it to your channel or whatever yeah. and then go from there, you know, and then you can use it to advertise for your training or whatever because... Like I said, man, I, I, I promote this shit because with the, on the veteran side, like it helps it help it help it helps me. I get a little off track sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Not too far off track. And I literally my off track would be drinking too much, plain and simple. Uh, but other than that, I haven't done that. I have no it's almost like if I if I finish training on a Friday night I'm sparring. Um Maybe the next day, yeah, the next day I have to be up for training again at yeah. 11. So I just have no use of going to a bar. I have no. Oh, well. You, but I mean, no, go ahead. No, I'm going to say, like, I mean, you can go to a bar, but you, you would think, well, what's the point of going to it? Yeah. I mean, I like, I'm pretty sure you'd be like, I'm pretty tired, pretty sore. My body hurts. I just want to go lay down, go to sleep, and, and get my rest. And get yeah. the rest that I need because the next day the same thing. I, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there at eleven. And maybe yeah. you know what? Tomorrow I wanna wake up and maybe I'm gonna fast in the morning. Maybe I'll just drink some water and that's it. And then you know, and then I'm going to train it and just push through. And after that, going to go home and eat. Yeah. And then it's almost. But see, that's why I said like I feel sometimes, especially nowadays, man, a lot of people try to feel like as much as, like, they, they can try to pile as much shit as in their, in their day and think they're getting ahead and it's like, nah, dude, they're really not. Like, and, and I've learned the hard way myself, too, huh? You're just cramping everything together. It's like, and you're not, you're, you're not, not, you're not enjoying it, right? Well, also, your mind is not, I feel, is not right in a sense. It's not, yeah. it's not uh, cleaning itself. Like, I feel your mind has to kind of filter out a lot of things, which is like I said, that's where the exercising comes in, mm. and a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, I don't know. There's I, I don't know his name, but there was a Muay Thai kickboxing fighter, and then he he made a comment saying that he didn't know how people couldn't work out, or I guess he didn't he couldn't really understand how people uh, 
Oh, excuse me. He couldn't really understand how people like didn't work out every day, you know, to kind of let that exertion out. You know? Yeah. And then, you know, going throughout your week where you don't even exercise or doing that. And then I, that's how I think now, man, because I'm like, I don't think I get enough of it. I, like if I was, like I said, if Paradigm was a lot closer, I would probably be there more more often than I should be. But, you know, work and just life in general, you know, and then I, I make it in the time that I do make it in. Mm. But I'm just saying in general, it's just like to, to put it in, it takes time. But but the times if you do put in what you put in, hey, man, that's better than nothing. Yeah, you know, I, I always tell people, um, and, and that's where I feel like when it comes to training, you know, for somebody to even think like, hey, I need to get to the gym or hey, I need to start running or hey, I need to do this or hey, I need to do that. Like, the, hey, that's just, hey, man, that's like you, something in your head's clicking like you need to do something about something. Yeah. So then Don't you can talk. Yeah, put, put some action to it, right? Right, but 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 I always try to I always try to tell people too though, is that don't be so hard on yourself, and whether you walk once a week, and then maybe the next week you run. Yeah, it's a start. And then right. maybe you maybe you do twice a week the next week. Maybe yeah. the next time you do three times a week, and then you know so don't be so hard on yourself. Or sometimes people are like so hard on themselves, and they're like, oh, I only did this, or I didn't do. No, don't be hard on yourself because you do work and you, you're not a movie star. You're not a fucking one of these Instagram models that, you know, however they're surviving, they're surviving. But mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, put in reality, like, be, be, be I guess, yeah, realistic. There you yeah. go. And then just be realistic and maybe put in two weeks of it and then you're proud of yourself because maybe you ran a mile. Yeah. Or maybe you went in and you just baby steps, basically. Yeah. That's all you, need. you don't got to rush into it. Like, um, for example, I couldn't even do a push-up. Uh, I, just, I just had to work through it. Yeah. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. Um, so. I mean, but, 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 like, I'm sure that helped, that works into your training that you, you know, when you do for your clients and, and you know. It does. It helps me a lot. Um, I tend to break things down. Like, if I, for example, if I ask them to do one thing and it's too much for them or they're... They understand what I'm saying, but their body's not really responding to what they wanted to do. Right. Right. People tend to punch and walk at the same time, or punch and kick at the. I mean, punch and kick, which you is impossible if you don't do it the right way. Yeah. It's doable, right? <laughs> but you're not gonna land both. Yeah. Right. You you can faint. For example, you can faint the cross and throw your right kick at the same time. But you ain't gonna land both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Right? Yeah, no, no, I, I exactly know exactly what you mean. Um, but I tend to break everything down from the basics to more advanced. Yeah. But if they really can't handle the advanced, then I break it little baby steps. But but man, it, it, but dude, that just like anything else, it's just gotta go baby steps, baby steps. But man, it's also it's funny because it's also like one of those things where it's like. Uh, I mean, like, it is what it is. Not everybody wants to jump in the ring. Not everybody wants to box. Of course, mm-hmm. it is what it is. No, no, but, but, but my point is, it's like, it's like, it's like I want everybody to experience it and know what it's about to, to understand it, but not everybody thinks, like... No, yeah. Um, you know? You won't, be, you won't be able to do that with us. Um, again, you've seen us far, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if you think you just jump in there, then uh, good luck, right? Well, no, I, what, what I meant was, like, more of, uh, like, you know, people who, who so, so uh, what, I, what I can say just in gen, like, just based off, like, the last year or so that I've been with Paradigm, uh, I've, I've seen a little muscle, uh, I've seen muscle mass, like I said, I've always been a lean person, so, yeah. I've, I've seen muscle mass in me, I, 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 you know, I, I, I don't know, I'm pretty... I don't know, man. Like I said, I just, just no. I won't even say that, but I, I would just more go more like like uh, the like the mental part of it, like the yeah. mental part of it, okay. which would be just me just being like 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 it just seemed beforehand as I started training in paradigm, I was always like 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 I ain't gonna bullshit like like my temper or, or whatever would kind of go up a little bit. Oh, okay. It still does now, time to time. Dealing with whatever's going on, which more than likely be kind of like family shit, but yeah. other than that, my point is, is like, 
it's almost like it's weird, man. Like I, I feel like when you have that exertion or you have that that where you've got a good workout in, especially boxing, or you've just been tested by somebody, yeah. or, or you fucking have your ass handed to you. If you Plain get, simple. If you want to get tested, come to Leroy's class. I promise you, you will gas out. Uh-huh. His workouts. Oh no no! I, I've been I've been in his class. Like he's another one that reminds me. Like I, I told Stan last time, he's another one that that. Throws you right back to the military, man. Yeah. He starts yelling at you and then he laughs. Yeah. Man, he's a really good hype man. He, yeah, he'll push you, push you through through a lot, right? But but um, dude, that 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 takes uh that takes like a certain type of person, you know what I'm saying? Not ever like you know what I'm saying? It's just like you think anything, like you have to have passion in order to do that type of uh, oh, yeah. motivation, yeah. you know? I mean, that's all the coaches. Like, every coach that you see in the, uh, at the gym, they're passionate about what they do. They want you to learn, right? Leroy's passionate about boxing. He always talking about boxing. Um, he'll come, when, when I first started working with him, he'll call me at 11, 12 o'clock at night, knowing that I'm sleeping. Like, <laughs> coach, I gotta wake up at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Yeah. Um, like, what's up? Like, you know, you, you could have done them to your training session and go on and on and on about the same thing for a whole hour. Yeah, You yeah. can talk about one thing, but you'll say it over and over and over and over. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, gee, he's also passionate about kickboxing, right? I mean, you work with him. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, he will beat me every time. He'll hit me in my ear. He'll kick me because I'm not checking it or... I'm being lazy with it. Um, same with the jujitsu, Coach Marcus. He won't yell at you because he knows what you're capable of, capable of doing. Right. Same thing with. Uh, but, but 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 see but see also I I relate a lot of that with like I I feel man like like I said and like I said that's just me being I I, I can actually talk some shit but that's like me being there now. Uh, it relates a lot with life, you know. That's my yeah. life on the wood. No, because it relates a lot with like I feel like the being pushed by those coaches. I mean, that's anyway. it, it, no, no, but like even Coach uh, Coach Leroy, he 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 throws some things in there that relate to life. Yeah. And and I I, I he might be on one thing of thinking one thing, but even I know the reason he's saying what he's saying is like when I I don't know I kind of look into things like that, and especially when your adrenaline is pumping like that, it's like in the mid workout. And I've been there, like, I want to do more workouts with Coach Leroy, but the times when I do do them, and, like, he, he starts, you know, saying what he's saying to motivate you to keep pushing. Yeah. And then it's, like, in the mid, yeah, dude, that shit kind of hits you. And it's just like, oh, shit. And then it's, like, of course, your adrenaline's pumping, you're sweating, you're there. You don't want to mess up. So that's what I'm saying. Like, it takes yeah, that. You're going to mess up regardless. Right, right, right. right. Regardless, but, right. regardless what you do, you're going to mess up. Uh, even though you, you think you're doing it right, to him, it's still not going to be perfect. Right? Um, even though you're doing it right sometimes, it's still not perfect. He still wants you to do more. Right. Same thing with G. Same thing with any code. Uh, we, want, we want you to do better. But right. see, that, but see, that's what I'm saying. And then, then I, I feel uh, you take that and then in your job yeah. or you uh, you know like, like you know like I said and then going to Coach G Coach G never pushes like hey man I want you to fight or I want you to do this uh, or do that like no but and then from that I just tell you like I go to my job you don't gotta fight to be training with us like, no 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 you, you don't yeah, no. they don't push you to the limit regardless because they know you can do it they know you got that um, what's that can't find a word I just, they, I just know they just want to push you. You can do better with you, what you're doing. No, but but I'm saying, like, I take that, and then when I'm at work or yeah. with family matters or when it comes to just normal situations where you're out in the street and then, you know, I have to say the street, like, when you're out somewhere and then you see somebody being stupid, I, got, I ain't gonna bullshit, man. Sometimes, like, I feel like when you have training like that, You can step back and you can kind of analyze what's going on because you somehow you have these tools and these tools is like you know like I said from exercising pushing yourself you know 
I don't know. That's how I feel. Like, I, what I mean is like you can step back and you can kind of analyze the situ- situation. Should I get involved? Should I not? No, I'm not going to get involved. But nowadays or, you don't want to get involved. No, you don't, man. Nowadays you have to be back to target. No, man. It is, and it's not even worth it. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, there's, there's some things that I come across at work and then, you know, there's some things that I have to kind of get involved and sometimes I don't. But I do know that the basis of it, when it comes down to it, if something was brought to my attention or something was brought to me mm. or where I had to defend myself, yeah, I'm not going to back down and then my training's going to jump in. Yeah. But this is only based on defending. And then I can even go back to when I was, I don't know, even just watching Karate Kid, man. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I mean, even Mr. Miyagi just saying, you know, uh, you know, always defense, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just defense, you know, just... You know, I just mean, protect yourself. Don't yeah, just ahead. protect yourself. You know, but don't be going looking around trying to push your weight around, and trying to kick some ass, or trying to, you know, and, and you know, and there's people out there, or like, and, and then I, I can even get deep into that shit. But I mean, most of the time, that's a misunderstanding within itself too. With with, I feel sometimes when there is encounters where some people have to fight each other on the street or have to fight, mm-hmm. and, and then you have the chance of falling, hitting your head on the fucking concrete, knocking yourself out, yeah. getting stabbed, shot. Fuck that, man. Yes. And, and then that goes back, I mean, I can even go back to what we were saying earlier, where it goes back to where, like I said, after I train on sparring, man, I go home. Mm. And because I, I, I could very well go out, and, and I'm not saying, I, I do like to go out sometimes, but then sometimes I feel... No, nah, man, like I said, I, like like you said earlier, like, like I really don't want to go out and be around people. Yeah. Because I'm tired, and then my body's sore. You don't want to deal with people either. And, Cause yeah. When you're tired, it's like your, uh, oh, I know my pace is very low. When I'm tired, I'm like, don't, yeah, don't bug me. Right. All right. It's been, and then you got people that are stupid, and okay, we are fighting. But I'm a type of person that... I'm not say anything. I'm just give you a dirty look, and you give me a dirty look. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Let's just go. Let's go. But but see, I, I hate it when people uh, tend to put themselves in situations, and then after the fact, they're like, "Oh, but I was there in the club, in the bar, and I was mind my business." But then they came up and they said some shit. I was like, "Well, okay, maybe you, maybe you were chilling, not saying shit to nobody. Maybe yeah. maybe, but first you at a bar. So that should be already a fucking given. There's dumb fucks out there at a fucking bar that's and like fuck with people. So that's a given already. Second, if there's alcohol there, that's another thing that's out of your control because you don't know how how much everybody's been... You know? Yeah. So my point is, is like you got to control your fucking... Your you got to be smart with Yeah, you, you got to be smart. Like, yeah. if you want to fucking stay in, then go home and you're tired and yeah. fucking stay in and, and do mind your own fucking business and yeah. stay in. Don't go out. And then, you know what? That's going to exclude you from all this bullshit that's out here that somebody that might get you fucking pissed off where you might end up doing something stupid or whatever. And that's the part where I kind of like, I said, like, I don't know, that just comes to maturity or just learn your fucking lesson because I learned my lesson the hard way sometimes more, more, than, more than a few times where, yeah, I just got in dumbass fights or dumb stupid shit, you know, and then, I, you know my, and then I have to sit back and, like, you, you try to blame other people and you're like, no, wait, hold up. Yeah. I like, done no. the same thing, so yeah. I just been, I just guess I just got smart over time. Like you know, after trying to just go home, chill, be with the family, right? Um, or go to sleep because then I gotta wake up the next morning and either go train, train, teach, or go to work. Yeah. Cause beforehand I used to work like a regular job, right? So now I'm just at the gym. So I can either train or teach. But see, that's what I like about boxing and just fighting in general because it, it's it's just a tool that hopefully you never have to use. Yeah. If it ever came down to that, and then hopefully you never have to use it. But it's just nice just to be like you have a little more edge than the normal person than yeah. next to you, you know. And then like so, it's just like you're you're just better prepared, better prepared. But like I said, I always feel it's more better being better prepared. To separate your, separate yourself from the situation and walk away, versus being the one that wants to yeah. fucking jump in head first and be like, "Yo, what the fuck's up?" Like, nah, man. Like, yeah. like, like now, be smart about like, it. Now know? I don't even look. I go home. I rather go home, be with, be with my wife and just chill, yeah. relax, right? But let's say, for example, I got a client. Um, 
His dad told me that his son's getting bullied at home. Uh, at home. At home? Uh, yeah, well, like the neighbors. Oh, okay, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, the neighbor's kid, I mean, he's still eight, eight or nine, I, forget, I always forget their ages. But he's getting bullied, he doesn't do anything, he doesn't defend himself. So like, okay, I could teach him um, defend to defend himself. Like, before uh, last month, apparently he got bullied. When, he first brought it to, when they first brought it to me, he was getting bullied. Um, granted, I was already teaching him a long time ago. I was teaching the kids class for boxing. Yeah. Um, I was teaching him and whatnot, but he stopped showing up for family reasons, I guess. Um, he came back. He still remember everything I taught him, but the reason they came back was because he was getting bullied. That's what his dad told me, um, and he wanted me to show him, push him a little bit more. So if you're gonna get bullied, they put hands on you, then fight back. Right. But I told him in front of his dad. I told him. Like, Go tell the teacher if you're getting bullied, or go tell his parent that he's messing with you. If they don't listen or do nothing about it, okay, you know what? Green light. You can punch him, <laughs> punch him back. <laughs> Defend yourself. I'll just sit there and mope about it and whatnot. His dad, his dad was everything I said. His dad agreed with me because it's the truth. If you can, if you have a solution, then you can solve it, right? Yeah. But for kids, if their adults doesn't help them or doesn't do nothing about it, well, okay, you can punch them back. Well, you should punch them back if they're punching you. No, I, 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 uh, I agree. Right? I mean, so, that being said, um, that kid bullied him a couple of times again. Uh, the little, my client decided to punch him in the stomach. The bully didn't do anything at all no more. He stopped. But kids being kid, the bully started bullying my client again. Uh-huh. This time, my client went off on him and his friends, <laughs> right? So okay, we can control little kids how they act and whatnot. But we can, as an adult, we can control. We can uh, let them do. Yeah, if as an adult, we can either look for the trouble or go home and relax. The kids, they tend to just. Be with the kids and they tend to get get around with the same kids for some odd reason yeah right but that being said if you're being bullied then fight back well no because i was bullied always man when i was younger yeah. dude and then yeah. my, my 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 way of thinking was to hit back and i mean uh <laughs> yeah i mean like i said i don't know if i ever have kids then yeah i would like to teach my kids yeah basics and then, I mean, even if they hate to come with me to go train, then I'm, they're going to hate it because I'm still going to force them to just, like I said, I just want, they don't understand what I've been through because I've been through what I've been through. And like I said, it's just to have that edge. Yeah. I, I don't plan on using it to, I don't plan on using it to uh, enforce it on anybody, just hurt somebody. No, I don't want to use it just to defend myself and... And that's pretty much it, yeah. you know, and then defend my loved ones if I have to, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. but other than that, like, like yeah. yeah. I wish, as a young age, I wish I would have known all this, like, no, no boxing, no jiu right. no everything. But, um, of course, I didn't. At a young age, I was bullied because I was smaller as well. I mean, I was sick as well, and they thought since I was sick, they can still bully me around. Yeah. Right? Um, but... I, I'm, I was I was been a fighter. So like you know, if y'all want to talk all that shit, we can fight. We can dig it out, <laughs> right? Like I didn't care. I was like a little chihuahua, but I I would bite back. <laughs> I'm a little kid, right? Um, so I always cater more to the kids because I don't like seeing them bully, right? Yeah. Um, but. I'm going to just teach how to fight back. I can do my of fitness as well for the kids or adults as well. Um, I have another client that is saying, like, um, he's a little bit older, but he's not from this country. Um, so he gets tend to get picked on. Not get picked on, but talk that shit. But um, he knows how to defend himself as well. Um. So you have how many kids you have then? 
client uh, right now got two. Two. Yeah. How old are they? Um, they all, both of them are either between seven and nine. Is either seven, eight, or nine? One of those. They kind of they like the first grade, second grade thing. I think that's their age. I'm not sure. Um, but they think, but already it's going pretty well. Then, like you said, I mean, at the same time, you're you know they're they're taking in the training. Yeah, they are taking in the training. Not just boxing. They're doing the fitness as well with me. Um, like little. Little workouts here and there to get them motivated, get their, let them enjoy the, the workout. They're, they're and teaching. See, man, this, and then see, man, we can go, man, we can go on and on. But, I mean, that's what I'm saying. And this can go into, like, like um, I don't know, man. I just don't get, and I don't have kids, so I can't talk too much shit. But I just don't get how a fucking iPad and sitting in front of that fucking iPad to playing video games. And like I said, uh, I, I, I mean, I can't understand baby games like. Well, well, no, no, I, no, that's what I'm saying. There, no, there's some things I can understand in moderation. Yeah. Some things in moderation. Yeah. But now it's like now, now this generation is just, and, and now I feel like I'm a fucking old man in yeah. a way, and, and it is what it is. But like when it comes down, it's like, damn, dude, like it's fucking, it's crazy because it, it's like it always seemed like it was always like a, a a normal thing to be involved in some sport yeah some sport like I, I, I lost interest towards high school but I was still involved and in, you know, I was still involved in, in, in uh, cross country I was still involved in some shit and then like when I got out I just knew I still had to be involved in something I, I just always had in my mind I had to do something physical or physically working where it was, I worked at Home Depot, so I was throwing concrete. Yeah. You know, I, I just always knew I had to do something physical because I just never wanted to not be physical, active. And yeah, just I mean, if we want the kids to stop being on their iPads or just <clears throat> stop being at home and whatnot, you don't trust the streets, like let them go play outside. Like when we were young, when I was young, like my mom would just let me go outside and play soccer. I wouldn't get home until the lights would go on from the street lights, right? That was my time to go back into the house. Yeah. So I would go, I would be like three, four hours just playing soccer, playing, just acting like a kid. Right now, there's just inside the house and whatnot. If you don't want, if the parents don't want to see that or they want them to be active, shit, they need to go to Paradigm. Or go to yeah, <laughs> kind of Paradigm, right? I mean, we got good boxing program, um, cameras leading that class, right? Uh, with Stan as well, Stan helping Cameron. They're like both got things going on right now, so both of them are making big moves this year. Hopefully, they can get a little kids, kids program started as well with them. Same yeah, with, um, same thing with jujitsu. I'm helping the head coach Marcus there as well. Um, I'm right next to him, helping teach the kids. So um, same thing with Breland. He got the fitness program with the kids as well. Like we, we got no, the man, kids. No, dude. I, actually, I I think it's pretty right. cool. Like when when I go in there, um, either it'd be like, oh, I'm out there it's like Wednesdays and Fridays. Okay, probably... so those days is just you can have kids for boxing and jujitsu going on. Right, um, Tuesday, Thursday will be same thing, boxing, jiu-jitsu, no, boxing, wrestling, and strength and conditioning for kids. Yeah. I mean, we do it all. No, right? but, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, like, like it, it's, uh, it's, it's cool, man, because, like, like, when I go in there and I see these kids, are like, yeah. you know, you're, I see them, y'all coaching them, and y'all telling them this yeah. and that, and yeah. Man, they need that shit, man. They, they do. They need, like, and it's, it's like... They might be shy at first, but after a while, I mean, Cameron can tell you some kids being super shy, <laughs> and then out of nowhere, they just make friends right there, and they, then, right? Then they open up. They got that confidence from Cameron, from Stan, or from doing jujitsu as well. Um, I, I see some kids that they're super shy, but once they start doing it, they... They bloom, they, they, they grow. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, once you see them compete, they're either happy about competing. Yeah, they're, if they lose, they're going to cry. Like, you just, we don't care about that. We just care that you're putting your effort. You're giving your effort. No, man, but that, that, like, so, like, in the military, that's all it was really about. Now, then it would be up to the individual. The individual himself... If they didn't want to fucking finish off the push-ups and want to look like a jackass yeah. and just be weak, hey, man, that's you, motherfucker. Uh, yeah. But, 
But, but I'm saying, like, when I was in the Navy, like, when, we, when they would do PT sessions, it would be, like, Marines is a whole different level. I've never, I was never in the Marines, but Marines is a three-month training. Okay. Navy was two months. Two months, but there was times where they would be pushing other, they would say, recruits, and these recruits, because we weren't officially Navy yet, so, they're like, we were going through the boot camp. Yeah, man, these guys would start crying, dude, about, like, just running in place for, like, constantly. And then, like, the, the, the petty officer would just yeah. sit there fucking with them. Like, don't stop. Fuck. And they'd be there just running and running, just, like, going and going and going. But yeah. Then, but That's different, though. Um, if we're going back to the kids, like, I guess, like, I don't know why they think or why they cry, but I can just guess because they don't want either to let their parents down or their coaches down, right? Because they're competing. But 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 even going that being said too though I think uh, if you I, I, I think it's it's no no but I'm I'm getting deep here though but yeah. I'm saying that I think it's thrown on another level nowadays yeah like from when we were kind of growing up when there was no cell phones oh, okay. no social media I don't know, I think now they take like you said it's just like a little more personal yeah it's like a little more personal it's like yo man chill out like <laughs> like, you, mean, like like you. you, you you can like you know you can be hurting and I yeah. can't do it you know I, mean, I can understand it because if I for example when we played football and we lost like I was upset because I was I was I was upset with myself because I don't know if I did good or bad or why we lost like I put that upon me right mm-hmm. so but now as an adult if I lost my can care less if I lost right yeah. on to the next if you're doing if you're going, if you're in the Navy or doing any boot camps and you're crying, then as an adult, then that's on you. That no, that's you, what I'm saying. You, sign, you do what you signed up for. No, that's what I'm saying. It's individual. Like yeah. I said, like like I said, but like going into something like that, like you should already have like it flip in your head or, or kind of something in your head say, hey, I'm going into something where there is a lot of physical activity. Um... Uh, Mm, something could happen where my paper, my orders could change or whatever. Uh, I mean, in the Navy nowadays, if you if you sign in and you, you more like you stick to your job. Now you might get to different places and go through some shitty. Some things can still kind of go out of whack if something happens. But my point is, is like you know what the fuck like you said just said you know what you're signing up for. But that's why I said sometimes I feel uh, like sometimes with with kids and. Uh, doing training like that like 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 yeah it's either they're gonna like it or not but i i feel as a parent which like i said i can't talk too much shit because i don't have kids but i feel as a as i do tell my mom that i feel like she should have done a little more to keep me involved even though i said oh yeah i don't want to do any more sports yeah. in high school because i did cross i did cross country running and then i did that to 10th grade and then i fucked up and then I went try to go towards soccer, and then I didn't know shit about soccer. I just tried, and I fucked up there. I didn't even do. I was like, I didn't even do that. And then, uh, so I never. I ended up. I'll be honest. I ended up being the fucking water boy. I believe it was like eleventh grade or twelfth. And then okay. after that, I didn't do shit. Yeah. And then I don't know something like I said something to me just switched because I was like, dude, I, I need to. I want to do something. And then uh, uh, we, we don't force the kids to compete or anything. If they want to do it, then we prep them, right? We prep them for ready. We try to get them ready. We don't. We can't always determine the outcome of winning or losing, right? But but I, but like I said, I think mom and I think parents, or even if you're a single parent, I, I feel exercise or being involved in something like that is very important it know? is yeah. it's, 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 it should be a necessity yeah like i mean i mean i can even go off the rails now and, and or on a rant and talk about like instead of like cdc promoting all this bullshit about like the, the you know the virus and, and, and they, they do that but then at the same time do what you're doing but then on the side maybe fuck it throw some other shit on the fucking tv where per night you're explaining how you need the pros exercise or you need to go outside and maybe work out and breathe. Okay. Even if it comes kind of fucking weird where it's almost like like I'm not gonna say it's like gonna be some like type of dictatorship, but maybe some people need to be explained on TV or national te- television where they're explaining like maybe you need to get out, walk around the block, 
Maybe you need to get out and exercise. Yeah. Maybe you need to get out and maybe instead of going to fucking McDonald's or going to Popeye's chicken, maybe you need to go yeah. and maybe eat a little more healthy. Maybe I mean, there needs to be more programming like that. I, I don't know, but my point is, is like, like, I feel like in America, you're, you're like, we're very smart and, and we are very like innovative, like type of like thinking, but like, work out, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could see why people don't like doing it at times because sometimes if I work out by myself, I'm like, I tend to get bored or I get sidetracked or, True. or, I just don't want to do it. But but then but then that's where the community comes. And yeah. My my community would be paradigm. Like yeah. The community right. so, that, that's where you like you yeah. said you you throw you throw your support on different people. Yeah. And that's push why it. I got my coaches, my teammates, my friends, um, everybody from paradigm just keep pushing me and keep keep make me make me want to do better at what I'm doing. Right. Right. Um, or for example, as one of my clients, like I want to get better at learning how to teach them or what can I teach them new something new, right? Like the same thing consistently. Or how, how to involve their game. Yeah. Huh? Um, but yeah, I can see why people don't want to do it. Because one, something, doing it by yourself is boring. I'm not going to lie. So, or sometimes it's just, you just don't want to do it. You just want to be lazy that day. But, but I mean, but, but nowadays, man, there's, there's a UFC, I mean, I'm sorry, man, UFC, there's an MMA gym, there's gyms all yeah. in every corner, so it's just like... You got to watch out for those as well, because I've seen in some gyms that they don't know what they're talking about. I've seen some coaches and, I, and don't believe what you see on Instagram or anything, because I've seen some coaches, and I might get a back, black, back flash, black lash on this yeah. then I see some coaches they don't know what they're talking about at all they can show you it they can they look nice here and there but they can also edit their videos but see that goes back to like you being in the game for as long as you've been in mm -hmm. man I mean dude you've been in the game since like man you've been in the game for a minute man yeah and I so. tried everything I trained everything not I'm gonna say everything cause I haven't trained like karate taekwondo taekwondo none of that but I seen it, I tried it, like boxing, kickboxing. I tried different styles and tried different methods of training it. Yeah. Right? It's just some people decide to make try to make it quick, easy money and just, oh I know boxing, oh I know kickboxing, oh I know I, I know this, I know that. I'm like, no you don't, bro. But see, it's, it's, um, I don't get lie, man. I, I, I mean, I get, we're hyping up paradigm, and nothing wrong with that. But like, they, dude, like I said, man, they, they, y'all, y'all know y'all shit there. Like I said, ever since I've been there, I, I've never, like I said, it just threw me back to just almost like being back. <laughs> I, I keep on going back and forth, but it's just like I said, it throws me back to almost like being in boot camp where yeah. I'm just like, I keep my mouth shut, I go in there, I listen, I try, I do it. Try to do it to the best, my best ability. I might get told wrong, right, whatever. And then, you know, like I said, I just don't ever question yeah. in general, you know. I just, I, my trust is in you. And then, like, uh, like Coach G, man, like, I don't, I don't question that dude, man. Like, no, because he won't bullshit. Like, yeah, he tells, all he tells people, me. Yeah, all, all the people won't bullshit you at all. They'll tell you how it is. They'll tell you what to work on. They'll tell you, um what you need to improve on, right? Or what you lack of, right? Um, if you want somebody that wants that's lying to you and whatnot and tell them, oh, you're doing really good, but in reality, you're not, yeah. then you're in the wrong spot. Right? But like you said, there's coaches out there who fucking mislead yes. you and tell you some bullshit. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I've seen people come and go, see they come and train with us for a little bit and then they go and they're trying to open their own gym, they're trying to open... Um, trying to teach their own stuff and whatnot. Like, I seen you train, I seen you spar, I seen you do th certain things. You're not good at it, yeah. right? Why are you trying to do something? Dude, you just getting somebody. You just gonna get somebody hurt if yeah. they ever decide to proceed. And if you're on the corner, like, no, don't do it. And see, dude, I've actually got people from work. And they tell me like, "Hey, uh, take me to the gym." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, but come, come through." Yeah. But dude, it's almost like sometimes they want me to grab their hand. <laughs> hey, and you they walk sometimes. Dude. No, no, I know I have to do it sometimes, but at the same time, it's like, 
I I went to the gym and I like I was nervous, man. Like I yeah. came I came into that I came in there the first day. I had the wrong fucking gloves. Like I didn't have the right gloves. They all knew that. And then, no, no, but coach is like, yo, y'all let that slide this time. But next time you have to get some better ones. And then see, awesome. You see, uh, it's called um, you know, you know what to do. You know what to bring. You can help them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not bad to. Like, it's to hold their hand, right? They just want to lean on somebody like they know, right? I'm not, like, for me, I'm not going to, if you invite me to go to a party or whatnot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be stuck to you because I don't know anybody around the room. And I don't, I'm not really talkative. Yeah. Right? I'm just, if you leave me in that corner, I'm going to stay at that corner. I won't talk to anybody. But, but, but even at the same time, though, isn't it like, I hate to say this, though, isn't it like sometimes you get, you know, maybe a percentage out of that group of where you have to walk them to it and then tell them and then they get into it and they get into it maybe a week or two weeks, yeah. three weeks, and then boom, they disappear. And it's just like, fuck, okay. But that's on you, right? Yeah. Well, no, I know, but I'm just saying, well, that, you're saying that's on the person that wanted to, yeah. want, that thought they wanted it, but then they yeah. like, oh, fuck And they think this, it's like, harder, but then that's on you being as a friend. Yeah, to yeah. keep on pushing them. But see, that's where I think them. sometimes is I'm like, damn, because I do all that, and next you know they're gonna be like, man, this is fucking hard. This is this and that. Yeah, like, and, hey, what, and, do, what do you expect? Yeah, I mean that's when you gotta tell them. I mean, the beginning is hard, but after a while, once you can start getting it down, then it becomes easier. Like you tend to change your life just to get better of what you're doing, right? Yeah. But see, I mean, me, man, I I had always had wanted to get into boxing or whatever my mom my mom and my oh well, actually in reality back when I was younger I always wanted to get into karate I just never really got into it because yeah. my family never had enough money to get help me get into it yeah. and then uh, uh, I don't know and then I was like well maybe when I join the Navy I'll get a little more experience and then when I would join the Navy like there was not a little, there was there was a lot of motherfuckers that would like wrestle oh dude like I hated that shit yeah because all I had was just like like, all I knew was, like, just fighting, like, street. Like, I just always knew just hands up and that. And then maybe, like, I don't know, I was kind of tall. And I had, like, you know, I was, you know, I had, you know, I had a little more muscle mass. Uh, but then, like, a lot of these guys that we got mixed in with that were from middle Midwest of the United, like, the U.S., whatever. Motherfuckers all had, like, like it was, like, a common thing in their school to have wrestling. Mm. So it was, like, that was, like, almost, like, me just... Playing basketball or fucking, I don't know, or running. Yeah. But then these motherfuckers had fucking wrestling. Like, that was their their sport from, like, elementary or, I don't know, maybe not elementary, but from, like, middle school to high school. And that was just, like, like something wrestling. they practiced. They, they can go from five years old all the way through college. But, dude, there were some college fucking guys college. that would fucking, like, they would, there were some, and then that was always a thing because then it would go into, uh, when motherfuckers would get real fucked up, the only thing that kept me out of trouble was the fact that I, I guess because I had a little height and I had a little more muscle mass, and then I would, I would stay away from shit. And then there was another guy that I would I would fuck with, and then him and I kind of got like rolling around a little bit on the ground. Mm-hmm. But dude, he had me, man. Like the only thing I have is my long arms to keep him away from me. Yeah. But other than that, that motherfucker got me to the ground. And he was a wrestler. He was he was a fucking wrestler yeah. from Oklahoma, and then it was a it was a common thing for them to know wrestling, you know. And then there was another guy in our shop because um, we we're part of a department under where I worked in the Navy. And then there was a few guys that, like I said, either another guy that knew uh, some ran. Like I said, man, it, 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 the basis was wrestling, but then they also took it to like a little farther than that. So there, I, my my point was, there's a lot of scrappers in there, mm. a lot of motherfuckers that knew how to scrap, but secretly. Yeah. Like, you didn't even know they knew until, like I said, until a motherfucker got too drunk and then some shit was talk and then next thing you know they're rolling around or being yeah. fucking, you know, testing each other's shit, yeah. you know? But see, uh, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't fight. No, no, but uh, no, 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 no. But I'm saying, like, they would, they would, like, if you were, if you were, they like, just this. You threw me off all this. No, no, but I'm just, huh? You threw me off all this, like, what? No, no, no. What, what I, my point was just like, like, was saying like people in the Midwest growing up, mm-hmm. like it was common for them just to have wrestling in their background. That was like almost like riding a fucking bike 
for me down here being from fucking Texas, I have no fucking wrestling at fucking middle school to high school. Nah. Yeah, I have shit. All I have was just knowing how to punch and this and that. And then when I went to fucking the Navy, I just noticed a lot of these guys were just like fucking natural scrappers, you know? The same. Like, I ain't had anything. Like, I wish my mom would put me in boxing because we were close to a boxing gym. Um, I guess I didn't want to follow my dad's footsteps because he was a boxer as well. I'm just trying to be something different, but yeah. look at me at eight when I first started like scoring my was just doing it. Cause I love it. Yeah. I love to fight, right? So at a young age, like I was just trying to like don't be my don't be like my dad. Don't be like my dad. Don't be like my dad. Yeah, yeah. Right. So but I s I was still boxed, but yeah, I was still calling calling like to teach me sometimes. Yeah. But he wouldn't do it because he didn't want me to fight. Oh, so it was more like a caring thing that he cared or the fact um, you don't know. Yeah. But I mean, but like you said, I mean, but, but, I mean, did he get amateur? Did he go? He like, was professional. No shit. Yeah. Um, he was pro boxing. He was fighting out of Houston. I don't know where because I was super young. So back in the 90s, of course, they didn't have no recording. Maybe yeah. they do, but I don't know. If, well, I never tried looking him up. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then also like I mean, but see, I can I can throw off in this one too though, saying that uh, um, I don't know, I man. I feel like sometimes like 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 you you could be in this world and you could kind of like venture and and travel and see things. Yeah. But you're still gonna go off the basis of where you kind of came from in a way. Somewhat, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. So, I, mean, I mean, I mean, it's almost like me with this this place here and everything that I like, you know. Uh, it's based from my dad. Yeah. Now, me and my dad don't agree on a lot of things, but then when it comes down to it, like, uh, a lot of things I do and everything I do is because of, of shit that I, I just learned from him, but then also he talked to me about, but then again, still, I still feel like Genetic, I, I don't know, I, I'm going off the rails, but I'm just saying, like, like still, like, like where you come from, it's still kind of, you're going to, you're going to, mold you, right? yeah, yeah, well, it's, like, already embedded in you, yeah. like, like, you don't know what you're going to end up doing, but you're going to fall in that line some, some way or another, yeah, yeah. like, you're going to fall your way to that, and then it's just going to come back to it for some reason, yeah, why, whatever, like, nah, I guess it's a fucking mystery, but that's my point, like, so my point was, like, even though, me, I mean, because even after me, like me and my dad, we, we keep in touch, but we don't even, but we're, we, we we don't agree on quite a bit. Yeah. We, we, we kind of butt heads on quite a bit of things. Like, like we could be farther ahead if we agreed on quite a few things or more than, you know, some shit, but we don't. So then we're kind of separated in a way. So then it just goes from there and then there. But, but I, but I tell them <laughs> and, and it still doesn't like, it still doesn't like, it, it doesn't kind of make things cool because even at that point I tell them like hey half the shit I do is because of you mm. like I wouldn't even be doing none of this if it wasn't because of you yeah maybe if I was adopted and sent to another world or I mean, I'm sorry another world but another place maybe maybe I would still be doing what you like to do I don't know I don't know maybe not and that, like you said, maybe the people you're around with, right? Well, yeah, yeah. So if you had a different father, then you might would have changed different. You might have been, you might would have been a different person. But I, I still feel though, even if you get off, like I said, for example, like if you're adopted or whatever, like I still feel like, um, like you're still gonna find your way back to where you just came from, mm. some way or another. I mean, you're still gonna. Like it's almost just questioning, like you if you uh, get raised and you don't know why you look the way you look, you know. I mean, you're just gonna eventually it's gonna venture back or somewhere. Right? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's <laughs> not. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, man, we've been going for an hour and thirty. So how'd you think about this, man? Pretty cool. Yeah, first time, yeah. Yeah. Like we're going all over the place, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, yeah, I know, man. We're all over the place. I mean, it, no, but we I think we kept it pretty level though. Yeah, but I mean, that's a good part, right? You go all over the place. Well, I mean Stan yeah, was here yeah. before, but yeah. I'm trying to still get Stan. Like I said, at least maybe you can tell I can talk to them again, like other people like that's the 
Stan, uh, Breland, Cameron. I just talk to them a, a lot. Uh, that's the people I... I well, see, I can set up two other mics. Yeah. And then it can even... But see, the whole... See, so I'm trying to step it up to where I can actually... Have a couple mics. One. Yeah, well, no, I, I can... No, I can add in two other mics right now if yeah. I wanted to. And then have two other mics. And then th- that would be on that end. It's just uh, the camera views or trying to, like, situate the camera and doing all yeah. that. I mean, again, um, like, those are the people I usually hang with. I talk to... Like to um a daily basis, um. But not, man. But no, but like a coach uh, with Leroy as well. Like no, well, no, Leroy, Leroy, like Coach Leroy. I've been, I've been trying to bring him on yeah. and interview him, just talk about his story too. And see, so, like I said, I can keep this going, you know. Yeah. Um, I could piggyback off of him because, like, I know he's supposed to talk about boxing and different things, um, but again. But you got yeah, the feel so, of this, though. Yeah, I got the feel. Yeah, of yeah, 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 hell yeah, that, and that's what I'm saying, man. This yeah. is, this is just. Dude, this right here is like, oh man, like I'm, like I'll be honest, I'm I'm in another world. Like I just enjoy, from from anything I'm interested in, from boxing and just random questions you just explain to me about cutting weight, getting into stuff like that or yeah, like like what motivates you to boxing? Yeah, yeah, man, I just I, I don't know, I just gravitate to sort of, like things like that, and especially yeah. with me being part of Paradigm. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, everybody has a story. Especially, no, true. Especially over there, right? Um, whether it's a good thing or bad, whether what they go, they going through. Um, not gonna say I didn't have a pretty life because life is life sucks, honestly, right? Um, but I love my life. I wouldn't change anything, right? From even from the from the bully to almost dying to now, I won't change nothing. Um, like I love it. Yeah. I go back through. I'll relive my life if I can. No, but that's what I feel, it's, man. Like it's survival, though. Yeah, it's survival. It's, with, it's what you. It's what made me put it like that, right? But but then, but, then, but, then, but that's what I'm saying, man. Like I, I feel like I went to the basis there at Paradigm because like there is the basis of. Uh, not, like I said, it's not the fact that people want to fight and hurt people. It's not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying like, it, it's almost like I go back to the like like I said. Using that as a tool just to move forward and, and yes. one week or maybe day by day and then maybe the next, next thing you know you're like, Oh man, I'm doing better like before you know it, you're making it week by week and then next thing you know month by month. Next thing you know you might have a different job or next thing you know you might be doing something a little better or next thing you know you might have some clarity on some shit that's going on in your life and then next thing you know, like I said, what I get from it, I step back and maybe able to analyze and then you're able to pick about what you want to be involved in. You're able to like, like I said, the basis of my ass needs to go home. I need to go rest. Yeah. I need to go shower, eat, rest. I'll watch the TV. Maybe I'll have a beer and then I'll go to bed and then done. Yeah. Make it simple. I'm not going to complicate my life by trying to do boxing and then come back and then show up a badass and go out and then fucking go out to the club and then do this and do that. Pandemic going on and then I'm doing this and that and I'm trying to show up for this girl, that girl. And I said, but, but like I said, easier said than done. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I still get, I still go off track time for time. Yeah, we're all like, human. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not judging or anything. I'm just saying like, like it, it, paradigm me doing the kickboxing under Koji, uh, yeah, man, that shit just helps me just kind of <laughs> keep you straight. Yeah, it just keeps you straight, man. And sometimes I'm like, oh shit, and then I come, I have to come right back in line again. I'm like, oh damn, you, you know for for a fact, um, G will yell at you. Oh yeah, dude, he yells at you. Like, you know, he'll 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 look at me eye to eye. But what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, same just, thing. My, yeah, uh, Leroy will yell at me because. I'm his assistant coach. I should be there. I'm his, like his second, second hand man, right? So if he needs me, I'm there. If no, I'm not there, then he's like, "Where you been? What's going on?" And, and see, yeah. coach and I never really talked about that. Uh, and, and I'm just saying, but but no, no. But I, I feel just me obligated, me being a student of his for as long as I've been. That when I get there, like I said, I just feel obligated, and and I just feel due respect to Coach G. As in, when it comes to like, hey, work with this new guy. Man, cool, hell yeah. yeah! Because I was there once before. I was right where that guy was at, or this guy now doesn't know how to punch, or maybe know how to like block. 
Yeah. And, and, and dude, that, that right there, I'm like, damn, dude, I was just like that guy. <laughs> I was just like that guy. That guy, and, I was like, I was there too. Yeah. Uh, before I was a, uh, an employee, um, I was a student. Right, I was under Coach G as first as well. And little by little, got me, got me under his wing. Then Leroy showed up, and same thing. I was still a student. I was um, learning from both. So like both the way, I'd be like, "How come you're not in class? How come you're not doing kickboxing?" Mike, where you at? Yeah. I was just driving up and down, up and down, right? Um, but until I guess Leroy decided to just put me under his wing and show me what he knows. Right, and then one day he's like, you know what, you're teaching kids. Huh? Like, he just threw that upon me, like, wait, what? Like, what, what do you mean you're teaching kids? Like, yeah, that's your class now. Same thing with G. You're teaching tomorrow, I won't be here. Wait, what? Like, no. <laughs> like, why you put this on me? Like, you are. Yeah. I, I guess. Yeah, but that takes trust. Like yeah, they, they trust me. They trust me. They still do. And now, um... Again, life hit me, got out of work. Now cameras were in the kids' class. And he's doing really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, I trust him. I know the, uh, Abby trusts him. Leroy trusts him for the kids' class. Like I said earlier, they, he's doing, he's doing something pretty big for the kids. No, I mean, but that, and then that, that goes into uh, uh, where the trust comes in is just like, uh, just the discipline, like you know, you're the person yeah. has discipline. The person has, because uh, like I said, man, I, I just relate even back to like when I was getting out of the navy, and then sometimes I was supposed to be at certain places at certain times, and dude, I failed at it, man, yeah. because I was like I said, my mental place was not right, because um, it just wasn't, you know. I mean, I, I mean, that's well, a whole other but discussion, but. G is telling you, I need you to help the new guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, but dude, that, that that dude right there, that makes yeah. a big deal to me. Like right there, that should that just jump like. He has to trust in you. Yeah, right? yeah, he trusts me. He's trying to uh, build you up, right? He's yeah. Really building, he's building you up, got that trust in you to teach the new guy or the new girl, either or, um, or a kid as well. And then you're also learning how to be how to be a coach yeah yeah no dude right. but I love that dude. So it's like you're doing three different jobs I, different I, yeah jobs. I love it and then it's just like I, I uh, you know of course it's a membership fee you know yeah. or, you know. but I mean like I said even me paying that fee I just don't I see I'm getting my full down to the dollar down to the penny out of that membership fee of just doing mm-hmm. that and then dude that makes my day like yeah. it makes my day of, of, of him saying hey man like go ahead get this guy today I'm like alright cool yes, got gotcha. you I was like, they're the same, like, I need you to teach this class. Huh? I can we hear a train, what? Like, now you're teaching today. Same thing, Leroy told me the same thing, you're teaching this class. What? The kids are the adults, the adult. what? Like, yeah. you can't put this job on me, I'm a, I'm a student, right? Yeah. But once they do that, they got the trust in you, right? Yeah. Which is, it's good, but it's sometimes nerve wracking, especially if it's your first time. Yeah, well, I mean, like, I, I haven't been, I mean, uh, but my, my plan is in the long run is to, like I said, I'm always going to uh, be involved with Paradigm, but the whole goal is I would love to share the knowledge of, of trained there, you know, yeah. and then, you know, but like I said, I, I'll speak for myself, like I, I don't feel I'm there yet. Um, I Actually, I have to do, I, I'm going to have to do a smoker. They actually, like, what's his name was uh, telling me today, he's like, hey, maybe you can do that smoker. Who, oh, Malik? No, not Malik. No, it was uh, uh, the Cuban dude. <laughs> Cuban? Anyways, he, he was there today, and he was just like, yeah, man, you're going to do it. And he, he, he's, this is twice, three times, or like two times or three times, he's called me out. Like, hey, man, you going to do that smoker? Or you gonna, when are you going to do a smoker? What Cuban dude? I mean, just that, I don't know, I don't want to say, I mean, I don't know, I might have to edit it later, but my point is, like, he, he, he just oh, keeps calling, like, which Cuban dude? He, he's calling me out, though, and okay. it's like, oh, man, all right, whatever, Got it. and then it's like, but I, but see, I have school, I start school next week, so that's going to take my time, so my mind's not going to be training, and training, man, and like I said, like, like no, 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 okay, so, so right as of right now, work, training, and, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Work, school, and then training. Yeah. 
But still, I, I still have no reason not to put in training. Yeah. No reason at all. I'm the same way right now, too. Got work, train, study, work. Oh, you're in school? Yeah. What are you going to school for? Um, Personal training, trying to get my certification on it. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, I know the workouts. I know all that. I already got my certification for the MMA workouts um, to personal train. Yeah. Right? Um, but now I'm trying to get like a regular person, like corrective exercise. Why do you go physical therapy, man? <sighs> That's too much. Nah, bro. Hey, hey, dude, you get your, you just, you, you, but no, but I mean, hear me out. So like, the only reason I, like, okay, so the only reason I, I had thought about nursing for a minute and then nursing, the only thing I thought would be cool would be knowing, knowing anatomy and physiology. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, dude. I'm fucking, a, I'm, yeah. I'm a fucking dumbass. Like, I'm, I'm, I mean, knowing all that stuff. No, but I mean, but, 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 okay, but, but hear me out. Like, like I said, like, I, 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 where I work at, I see a lot of people that have a lot more fucking school and all that. But dude, at the end of the day, it's like, like it still trips me out because like the reality, it still partakes into exercising, it still yeah. partakes in keeping your body right. And that right there, I feel like if you're doing that, then that kind of outweighs of being, I'm not gonna say education is not outweighing being healthy, but I'm saying, if you can be healthy, then education is kind of like the same deal. Like, like especially if you're in that same atmosphere. So that's what I'm saying. A and P or your a anatomy and physiology would just benefit you just as much as what you're studying right now because it's the same shit. Yeah. In a sense, you're just diving more more into it, more in depth of yeah. understanding how the muscle, how everything works. And that's what I'm, that's the only advice I would say. As in, that's the beauty about school. When, when you're involved in this atmosphere, like, like, cause you're gonna dive more into it. See, to learn, to learn the, 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 see, even down to the cells of. See, if I'm gonna learn all that, I have to be in, like, super into it. Um, if I do that, I'm pretty sure it's gonna take up a lot of time with my training. No, 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 true, 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 true. But, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, 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 like another thing back in the long, you know, maybe yeah. in the future or whatever, you know? Yeah. Maybe. Like I said, I, I see. Doc, I see doctors sometimes, man. It's just like, like you know, sometimes you want to be like, who the fuck you tell them about? Right? Like, like. <laughs> uh, maybe in the future, yeah. Yeah. If, if I'm if not if I'm not busy, but now I'm just making up excuses, right? Hey, hey, no, I, I would say it's almost relative to like having a trainer. Obviously, if you have a trainer who comes up to you and he's overweight, doesn't look like he's very fit, doesn't really look like he gives a shit. I mean, and then he's trying to tell you how to do things and how yeah. to say this and that. And you're like, whoa, hold up. Versus a person like you who's but been training since... How old is he, though? No, no, I'm just saying uh, hypothetically. Because uh, if he noticed all the trainers, I'm not going to lie, all the trainers are kind of big, honestly. They're overweight. But yeah, they're the one taking the championships to the higher levels, right? True. Taking fighters to a higher level. Make them a champion. Huh? So, well, if I mean, they know what they're talking about, then do they really gotta be in shape? No, 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 you're, no, no. I'm not saying specifically, but I'm saying like, as in, uh, with your background specifically, like, like you, you've had this much, so it's just, it's just like almost extra shit that's gonna back you up even more. Yeah. Now you even have more education on how the body works. You even have more education on. It where it can go far how far it can go you know okay yeah that that's what i was kind of meaning okay. versus like yeah don't get me wrong yeah there's some guys that train and they you know kind of they don't train as hard as they used to and they lose you know whatever but i'm not discounting the fact that you don't know it's just the fact that you know i feel education is always just helpful towards of course education is always help helps you out no matter what anything you do right but I'm, but I'm saying even in that even in the training uh, thing I remember uh, when you're trying to get your certification yeah, there's a lot of A&P shit in there too though anatomy and physiology yeah I mean I mean I mean that anatomy and physiology at HCC that's gonna go more in depth like technical part of it. yeah like I said man I had to drop out of nursing like I I, I attempted it where I was gonna take prereqs yeah Fuck that, man. I like, tried going back to school. I tried going back in college when I came back um, from Cali. Dude, I, as soon as I sat there, I'm like, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't focus. Yeah. I tried for two, three semesters. I couldn't focus. I barely passed. 
Now you try if I go back for an admin, oh, I'm definitely not gonna fuck it. I can only sit there for five minutes, ten minutes tops and focus on them. Yeah. After that I'm I'm just zoned. Yeah, no, I feel that. Right. Like I'm kinda of shocked to focus on this right now. I'm not gonna lie. But now I've been zoned. Nah man, you've been doing good, bro. Right. It's all good. So have you enjoyed this shit though, right? Yeah. Yeah, so is what it is. Like I, I can't sit still for 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 that long. I gotta move. And this. No, we're going at an hour fifty. We can end it now, man. It's all good. So I mean, what time is it now? Um, I got I got uh, somebody coming home, so I gotta get with that. It's eight thirty. But yeah. But yeah, man. I'm glad you came through, bro. Of course. So uh, what'd you think? It's nice for experience, experience about this, yeah. Yeah, but you see, now you feel the mix. You see yeah. what I'm talking about? Like like how we just talk just, about boxing. And, oh, I mean, but we can talk about whatever, man. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I don't have like an actual platform where I'm like getting into... Uh, you don't got to repeat your questions over and over. Yeah, but I mean, but, but I still want to get more into what you were about. I mean, yeah, dude, you gave me a lot, man. That's yeah. fucking badass, dude. But yeah, man, I mean... I, I don't know, man. I respect you. I've always respected you when I was there. Of course, we talk <laughs> time to time we talk shit, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, man. I, I, like, I, no bullshit though. But I've always respected you since I've been there because I knew you knew your shit, and I knew. I don't know. I just knew just me being who I am. I just knew you knew. Um, you, you, you got you kind of got a vibe, mostly right. That's what you mean. Yeah, I got a vibe from you, like as in saying, like, yeah, man. If um, you've been there. And, and you've been through the, the ups and downs and, and, and you know if, if I had any questions about anything and I could come to you yeah. but then again like I said I, I see you just as one of the coaches as well man I see you just Coach Leroy I see you just like just Coach G uh, I, I see you just in the same level as them like if I ever have anything to come to or ask or anything then I could come to you even if I want to promote maybe if I have somebody that I know that wants to train and hey man maybe you know go talk to my buddy Mikey yeah. and let him know what's up you know he'll get you right but yeah, man. So yeah, yeah. So I'm just glad you gave me the opportunity for you to come on here, talk to me, and, of course. and just tell me your part, you know, or just tell me your view, um, what motivates you. And then that, yeah, man. I just, I, I thought this interview was badass. Yeah. So you're, you're helping me out, and uh, yeah, man. So hopefully you'll come back again. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And then maybe we can bring Stan on the the yeah. time, you know, so we get that I shit going. Know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of hard. Well, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's kind of hard. It's just they got their own time, right? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, and, and that's why I understand with everybody. You know, yeah. I, it's never no pressure because you know everybody's doing their thing. Yeah. And then from that, uh, everybody's um, has to make time to come in here. <laughs> but yeah, man. So we record it. We get everything going. So everything's cool. <clears throat> All right, Mike. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and end it now, man. All right, cool. All right, bro. Thank you. <laughs>